I'm Patricia Ballone with CTV News. Joining me now is Senator Jim Rosepep. Uh, thank you so much for joining us. Hi, nice to be with you. Well, I'm, the reason I um, asked you is I wanted to find out, there are several or quite a few universities around the country that uh, because of COVID-19 are considering whether or not to postpone in-person classes until 2021. Um, there's concern about students showing up at the dorms, being so close um, together and not being able to practice social distancing. Mm -hmm. Is that something you, the University of Maryland, you believe, is going to be contemplating? Well, I think the University of Maryland is looking at these whole set of issues. I don't know specifically if they, I doubt they have plans right now for exactly what they're going to do for this fall. Uh, we had a briefing this morning with our legislative COVID uh, crisis oversight committee and actually Chancellor per Perman was on, and he talked about that issue, is they're trying to figure out right now what to do for summer school, and then they're going to figure out what to do for next year. Uh, my own view of this is that uh, online is here to stay, just like the internet is here to stay. And this will actually be um, the transformative uh, time for education at all levels, including higher education, that we're not going to go back to the way it was. Now, does that mean we won't have dormitories, we won't have fraternities and sororities, we won't have on-site classes, sure we will. Um, but when the car got invented, uh, we still had horses and we still had bicycles. Uh, but I think because, among other reasons, first of all, the, the kids are digital natives. So they have grown up with the skills that older people are now just acquiring. That includes teachers and instructors. Um, so now there's been this crash course over week, uh, just a few weeks for literally every instructor at the University System of Maryland, at the College Park campus, other campuses, to have to learn how to do this. And it's not being done perfectly, and people are making mistakes. Uh, but we're going to come out of this a few months from now with people with skills they never had before. And I expect, and I certainly hope, that the universities will look at it strategically. I know the University System of Maryland is because we were already moving more towards online courses in a big way. Obviously, University of Maryland Global Campus uh, was online before online was cool. Uh, and now the University of Maryland and other campuses are catching up with University of Maryland Global Campus. Um, so I think it's going to be transformative. Now, does that mean there will be on-site classes or won't be on-site classes in September? I don't know. Oh, is there a message you would give to students who are trying to plan what they are, want to do during this uh, time of crisis? Meaning right now or for next year? For both. <laughs> well, for right now, you know, hang in there. I mean, I, I think the kids are a whole lot more resilient than the adults. I mean, I'm always amazed at the number of adults that I'm on Zoom calls with who say, this is so difficult. This is so challenging. This is such a new experience. Well, it is for me uh, and other people. But for kids, it isn't. I mean, um, two-year-olds are on their phones uh, and communicating with their friends. So, you know, older people are just catching up with the younger people. So, um, so, so, so I think it, it's easier for them in a lot of ways. Uh, in terms of next year, it seems to be pretty straightforward. Um, the universities are going to be providing a lot more online capacity than they ever have before, in general. Number two, there are very accomplished, experienced online universities, like University of Maryland Global Campus, which is a world leader. Uh, I would think a lot more people are going to be taking courses with experienced online providers. And actually, the challenge for the more traditional campuses, like the University of Maryland College Park, will be to catch up. So people will want to come uh, to schools that are more traditional, even if they don't have the uh, experience with the delivering education online. But they'll catch up. So what about students who had plans to travel abroad or the foreign exchange students or, or the students from foreign countries who are coming to universities? Well, clearly that has both slowed down and frozen in some ways. I mean, I think the majority of students that we have living on the College Park campus right now are foreign students, many of them Chinese. And people said, well, you got to leave the campus. And people say, you want me to go back to China right now? I mean, and they were like, oh, no, that's wrong. <laughs> so actually, the University of Maryland has actually done a great job, I think, in terms of being very intentional about making sure there is safe housing uh, for the international students. And, and there are a few other students in the United States who, for whatever personal reasons, can't go home someplace and be safe. And so they're staying 
but most of the students have gone home, which is which is obviously right. In terms of next year, uh, one has to presume that there will be less uh, foreign travel um, than there was last year, but how that'll play out, um, it's hard to know. And the other thing always to keep in mind about this is what the public health people say is until there are effective vaccines, um, the need for um, self-isolation, the need for physical distancing is going to remain. Not for everybody, not everywhere, but until there are vaccines, uh, things really won't be back to normal normal. So basically the new normal, that's what we keep hearing. Exactly. All right. Thank you so much, Senator Rosapep, for joining me. I appreciate your time. Thanks an awful lot.